Good morning, Mark Sutton with HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for Wednesday, September 27th, 2017. In the Atlantic today, we have Maria, which is now a hurricane again. Top winds 75 miles per hour once again. Air pressure 978 millibars. But the good news here, moving north, northeast now, so it's losing its longitude or its track towards the United States. Slowly but surely, north-northeast there at 6 miles per hour. Looking at the track map, this is going to head out into the Atlantic, and or farther into the Atlantic, further into the Atlantic, whichever way you want to put it, and it will not be a concern for landfall anywhere. And after the legacy that it has left, I think that's very good news. Now, that being said, there still are and will continue to be effects along the North Carolina Outer Banks. I will go over that in more detail in a moment. In other news, Lee is now a major hurricane, the fifth major hurricane of the season. That is extremely rare to have happen. And it's the fifth one, the fifth Category 3 or higher. When a hurricane reaches Cat 3 or higher, it is referred to as a major or sometimes called an intense hurricane. And Lee is also going to catch a ride on the westerlies out here that will steer Maria, uh, and the two may kind of combine forces somewhere over in the northeast part of the Atlantic, possibly near the UK, in some kind of a large extratropical storm conglomeration. If that looks like it's going to be the case, I will mention it uh, in a future update. But, you know, some of the folks over in the UK and vicinity, keep an eye on this, because it could bring quite a bit of energy, which originated, of course, down in the tropics from Africa originally uh, over your way. So just a heads up. All right, so uh, let's look at the satellite picture this morning. There's actually a lot to talk about, so I want to try to keep moving. Uh, you see this front trying to come through, but it's not making a lot of progress. We're going to see a brief change in the pattern, and then this huge ridge is going to build back over the eastern part of the United States again. And luckily, when that happens, there's not going to be a westward-moving hurricane coming out of the tropics like we had with Maria and Irma before that. However, that pattern will set up, since we are heading into October here eventually, a different line of ingredients for the possibility of development, which I will also go over. So first of all, here is Maria, and it's gained a little bit more convective activity over here on the eastern side, and the wind's now, like I said, up to 75 miles per hour, and that's going to be mainly way over here, well offshore. There are still tropical storm force winds buffeting the outer banks of North Carolina. I'm at the Hilton Garden Inn here in Kitty Hawk, and you can hear the wind out there, those strong gusts, um, easily reaching 40 to 45 miles per hour at times. And that's going to continue for the next several hours and then slowly wind down, luckily. Now, we do have another high tide coming up while all this is going on. That'll be early this afternoon. And so the Outer Banks will see one more round of increasing water levels. And then the high tide tomorrow morning should start to come down a little bit, so we'll see about that. And you see Lee out here, very well-developed hurricane, very small, but very powerful, Category 3 and the fifth one of the year. Luckily, Lee will not add to any of the problems that we have seen along the East Coast or elsewhere, like I showed you. It's going to turn and then head on out to sea. All right, um, what did I want to see? Okay, so... We have quite a complex situation setting up, and it's you know kind of now time to shift. I don't want to say less about Maria. And did I call it? No, okay, I thought I called it Marie for a second. Maybe I did. Anyway, I don't want to say that I'm emphasizing Maria less, but as it exits the scene, of course, that's what will naturally happen. And what we're going to do is be focusing on what's happening over here, and then some interesting things that are going to happen along this area over the next few days and the best way to kind of go over that first let me show you the GFS here 
Um, we're going to go out to seven days and just take a look at the evolution of this pattern. Uh, I'll try to speed it up here. First of all, you see uh, Maria heading out and you see Lee heading out. So these are no longer going to be any issues. But I want you to keep your eyes on this region through here and then what happens over in this area over the next week or so. All right? So we're going to speed it up just a little bit more. So you see, by about Saturday, we get some vorticity or some energy that kind of fires up there um, just in the northwest Bahamas, comes over Florida, and then takes off underneath this ridge that builds, and that's kind of the end of it. Well, what is that? You know, uh, in fact, let's just go back. I want to stop this, stop, and we go back, and let's try to pick out when that was. And this is the um, 6Z run from this morning, by the way. So probably about 72 hours out, it starts to materialize. So really not concerned about this being a big wind producer. But what we're seeing is this energy or vorticity in the atmosphere. And I'm going to read you the forecast discussion out of Melbourne, Florida, in just a moment. But let's just go through the, let's see which way is the best way to do this. There it is. Let's just go through these frames here. This is 70. Each one of these is an hour. So you see it kind of moves off the coast there, gets its origins uh, in the northwest Bahamas. And this is the 5,000-foot level of the atmosphere. And some of these winds in here, 35, 40 miles per hour, I guess these are knots. And so there will be some wind component to it. But the bigger problem is going to be the rainfall that could occur across this region and the possibility of a pretty stiff onshore flow down here that helps to kind of pile up the water. And so the bottom line is there could be an impactful sort of falling between the cracks storm, not necessarily a tropical storm, sort of one of these weird hybrid kind of deals uh, that we need to watch over the next few days. And you can see, you know, there's a little bit of energy associated with it. You see the vorticity increasing and it's kind of round in its shape right so it's not this weird amorphous look all right so it's got my attention and interestingly enough and by sheer coincidence i promise i'm flying down to fort lauderdale here on sunday to go down and pick up the weather station and marathon and the camera that was there the camera from Miami and the two cameras in Collier County. So I'm already going to be in Florida. <laughs> yeah, isn't that perfect timing? So I'll keep an eye on it. I'm not too worried, but it's going to be an impact, all right? Rain, wind, there's elevated river levels down there still, and so that could be problematic. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, real quick, I want to read the forecast discussion, just this area right here. Uh, for you folks out here on the Outer Banks, me included. Um, so Maria, of course, well offshore. And, you know, there's definitely some 40 mile per hour or higher winds, etc. You know, we know that. But the, uh, the main issue is this right here, if I can circle it. Um, the large surf and the beach erosion, the ocean overwash. And, of course, we're coming up on high tide in just a few hours. And so we should see another two to four feet, not on top of what we've got, but a, a rise that gets us two to four feet of inundation, um, more than likely along the sound side from Ocracoke to Hatteras Village. And I have a camera in Hatteras Village. And then, of course, Highway 12, especially P Island in that area, um, Rodanthe, you think about down in that area, Overwash, and flooded roads, sand on the road, just kind of nasty. Debris may be coming in and Avon across some of those homes where the overwash takes place. And then hopefully this is the last of the major high tide events. All right, so just kind of pointing that out for you folks that are either down here or who left or have interest here and you're wondering what will the rest of the day be like, and that's the answer. All right, so then real quick looking at Melbourne, Florida, uh, just kind of looking at their discussion, uh, complex situation with energy coming in, um, but I want to focus on this paragraph right here 
where they say by Saturday there will be an increasing concern for local hazardous impacts from heavy rainfall, especially in training bands along coastal areas, giving the ongoing larger basin river flood concerns, coupled with the high water table, and if all this is left over from Irma, residents in areas with ongoing flooding or that are prone to reflood may need to take additional measures to protect property from additional inundation. And this is related to that system and maybe even a series of systems. We'll have to see. It's going to be a weird pattern setting up. Uh, so you folks down in Florida along the central coast there, going to watch that, and I'll be on top of it as well. Real quick reminder, hadn't talked about this in a while, and some people were reminding me to talk about it. They have my best interest at heart. Remember, this is my job, and if you would like to support the long-term effort on a monthly basis, you can join Patreon, all right, and you can contribute a certain amount, and that crowdfunding adds up. It really does. One day, I really hope to have this up, you know, to where we're bringing in about five grand a month, and then I can have a staff. Oh, let me tell you, the things we could do, it's not about getting rich and taking elaborate vacations. I want to be able to have a staff. I need new equipment. I need a salary. I mean, I think that's fair. I don't work for free. So we really, really, really want to grow this right here. And um, it's getting there. So that's awesome. And, of course, we still have the PayPal. And you can send a one-time contribution anytime you wish through PayPal fund at hurricanetrack.com. And thanks to everybody who has helped to make the crowdfunding thing work. I really appreciate it. And I've actually been able to pay a couple of people this year to help me. And it's made a big difference. It really has. We've been able to do just a little bit more and be more consistent with our updates. Uh, and I wasn't the only one having to, to do everything. And I think that's great. So thank you all. All right. Well, that's it for me for today. I'm on the Outer Banks uh, up in Kitty Hawk. If you go to the HurricaneTrack.com homepage, there is a listing of all the cameras that are running Feel free to check those out. Of course, they are also conveniently in the app. So if you're on the go, you can just go to Hurricane Impact on your phone or your device or whatever, your iPhone or your Android Galaxy S8 or whatever it is, and look at the feeds there. They're also there as well for your convenience, aggregated into one nice package. All right? Have a great rest of your Wednesday. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll have another video discussion for you tomorrow morning.